going through the field and seeing the result of a burnt forest, that was really tough. Nature put hundreds of years of work into this, and then one day and it's vanished. the earthquakes, the storms, the heating, the mass extinction. We thought we can master nature. No, sweet human, you cannot master nature. Earth is crying out and we are wrecking the planet. In front of our eyes, nature is screaming at us to stop wrecking it. And what we do at the same time, all around the world, is growing our economies. And I'm asking myself, to the current climate crisis, can growth really be the answer? There's so much smoke from the cars that it hurts to breathe and that your human instinct tells you this is not very good. Yang pentingnya kalau orang Dayak ngaju, kalau orang hutan itu. Sampai sisa sedikit sekarang. Is this all that humans can create? Is this really the best thing we came up with? Polluting the air with things that steal the time during our day, which is the one precious resource that we have, lifetime. You have to understand, plane will always emit carbon. Unless you decided that we're going to just take horse, or so you still need that. The question that we're trying to solve is, growth doesn't seem to be the answer, but your take would be like, the ones who grew already 
can they please stop and then the others can like... I would not say it that way. Yeah. I think when I said about growth, we just have to rethink about growth, just like this, right? Is there a model when we said that, you know, we're still going to grow, but it's not going to jeopardize the environment? Mm -hmm. Not only that it's not going to jeopardize the environment, it's also providing wealth for the poor. That's the growth that we have to think. So my daily life is just like any other bankers. You came to work. I was actually doing real estate uh, underwriting, so we do a lot of uh, deals, lending money to uh, the real estate companies. And that's what I do, making how to, to make profit every day from a typical banker perspective. Sometimes, you know, when you have an idea, you want to do something. People say that, yes, I am crazy. But I think back in 12 years ago when I started this, I felt that this is the right thing to do. The business case is for us, how can we put communities as our partners? Basically creating sustainable livelihood, creating more income, because that's in line with our business. When they are actually harvesting coconut, then we make into coconut sugar, which is more value-added product. And then we are increasing their revenue or their income. These farmers have real impact, and some of them actually used to be illegal loggers. Now they become farmers. So it actually helps us in terms of how we can restore and conserve Katingan Mentaya project by empowering communities. If you can get the people productive by not cutting trees, then you will definitely have the forest protected. Basically, our customers are actually companies like Shell, Volkswagen. So if you buy a certain types of uh, gas that Shell provides to the consumer, they automatically will offset or will allocate certain amount of that fuel prices that they receive from consumer to project like us. Pretty smart. From an entrepreneur perspective, you know there's forest, there's indigenous people working there. There's people on the other side of the world who kind of would like to do something green and protect forests. And he'd be like, yes, you can pay me. I can help the indigenous people and I can help the forest not to be uh, burned or uh, cut off. And therefore you pay me. So morally, what it does, if I know I can offset the stuff that I do, then I do not re think and re-behave because changing behavior is the hardest thing that humans are doing. They know smoking is not good, they still smoke. They know that you should more work out, they don't do that. So if I can offset it, will we ever change on a global scale our behavior? I think I'm sure that we, that path is actually the right path. But sometimes, you know, whatever you do, even though you do your best, you still cannot avoid that emission to happen. Therefore, that offset have to come. So I think offset is okay to be a transition. I'm not saying that you know uh, offset has to be there forever, but I think there is a certain things that 
company, you know, let's say you're doing fossil fuel. To suddenly stop fossil fuel is sort of like, it's impossible. You cannot stop fossil fuel. This man, he made the shift. He went from, I'm a banker, to no, 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 I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save the forest. That's a huge shift in identity, which means there's people who are willing to make that shift. That's a good sign because that is one out of many, many soldiers of the army of humans that we need in order to shift the economic system, to shift our behavior and our treatment to the planet to something sustainable. I feel guilty on a few levels. I feel guilty of like, I better not post all the pictures of all the flights I'm taking on Instagram. Why do I do this? Because obviously I'm trying to sweep stuff under the carpet. And that's just a smaller picture. This is what other people think about me. Do I feel guilty in the bigger picture? I feel it's unfair. I got lucky on so many levels. I live in a safe country with a jackpot passport. And most likely, the economy around me will figure out a way that we're not going to die from heating. I cannot look anybody in the eye that is in a rising economy and tell them, yeah, I'm sorry, you, can, you have to stop growing. It's, it's an insult. It's, uh, it's making the inequality even worse. So the question, is growth the problem? Yes, but stopping to grow cannot be the answer on a scale. We have too much plastic everywhere in the nature. There are people selling these products because they're trying to make a living. So I cannot tell them off for doing that. 
But seeing them selling these products, I know they will end up in some landfill. Used for a moment and then it will be trash. Saya saya pilih beli apa ambil sampah yang plastik sama kerdus saya sendirikan sendirikan kalau yang yang basah dibuang di tempat sampah lain gitu terus saya terus saya bungkus terus di, diambil anak kami sampah gitu. Ya kalau saya kan apa itu kalau buat bayar itu kan nggak mampu. Saya kan cuma ibu rumah tangga. Makanya saya ikut clean sampah itu supaya bisa berobat. Just to make some money, but we focus to help. Iya, mohon izin ya Bu ini Mbak Bianca dari Jerman. Yeah. Oke, okay, permisi ya Bu. Mari Mbak Bianca. Nanti saya periksa Bu ya. Oh, periksa lagi ya, Saudara. Oh, gitu ya. Ini saya usah cek ya Bu. Terus Ibu ada keluhan lain enggak? Ini lo lambung sering. Lambung juga sering ini ya, masih apa nyeri-nyeri gitu. Iya, iya. Punya di white mah enggak sih, Bu? Punya. Iya, saya ungu ya, Bu. Entar ini nyaman. You can come to the clinic free to get hot access. Or medical doctor, nurse will come to your home, and you just pay it with the garbage. I think a garbage is the best solution because almost every day, every house, every person they have garbage, so all citizen can join our program. Nah, ini curhat ke teman curhat aja. Iya, gue telepon Bida. Terus gue misal, ahli gizi bisa juga ya. Kita macam lagi ya. In every culture, when when you when you drink and you cheer to somebody, you wish each other health. That's the one thing that all humans have in common. Health is the one thing that counts. All the rest we can do, but health is what there is. Looking at the world and seeing that there is a problem that millions of people have no health insurance and at the same time the streets are full of plastic and trash and then you as an entrepreneur as a founder as a person with this entrepreneurial mind you look at those two problems and make them one solution So there was a point when you realized this, this stuff, like this thing is business, basically. Yes. So How did you come up with this idea to think, let's take this into a opportunity? Yeah, because we start thinking, how could we create a health financing model which permit all people to get health access? If you ask money, they will not give it. And then uh, with this uh, plastic, could you imagine, we can help poor people to get health access. So we bring a garbage, yeah. become money, and we give it back to them as health access. So, practically, we offer residents, please uh, kindly submit garbage as worth $1 per month. In return, we cover, cover primary healthcare service in a holistic manner.
So few have so much, so many have so little. And this is not only the number. Because of this problem, a lot of people cannot get health access. A lot of people cannot get basic education. A lot of people, they can also cannot get like the healthy need, healthy food. They cannot get like the clean water, improved sanitation, and a lot of problem we face because of inequality. So you see everybody walking in there because of a poverty reason. Um, seeing Indonesia and also beyond having many people staying poor and becoming more poorer and a few people become more richer, what would be your potential solution to that scenario? How can that stop? Okay, uh, you know, the basic principle of the capitalism is uh, they want to spread the welfare. I mean, if we, uh, rich split people, yeah, rich people have the money and they bring the money to the bank, the uh, poor people can uh, borrow the money to start the business. But after 100 years, you know, what really happened? No, the rich people become uh, rich people <laughs> and poor people still uh, poor people, yeah. And, and it's become worse. The inequality, the gap is higher right now. The capitalism is failed to fulfill their promise, promise to spread the welfare. Faith, and yeah. that's why social entrepreneur burn. Because why? For profit sector, they cannot help people because financial orientation. Not for profit sector, they don't have enough resources to help people and to solve the problem. So that's why we bring social entrepreneur to combine a financial orientation and bring it for a social mission. Deeper? Shall we do deeper? Yes. Yeah, right? Okay, I'm holding it and you make the hole. Let's. Okay. Basically, we are very happy for doing something like yes. this because this is a little thing that we can do yeah. for taking an action now, yes. not just talking. Lebih kesedih sih karena mereka nggak mikirin kita yang di bawahnya kayak gitu. Jadi kalau mau marah ya mau kayak mana marahnya terus itu kan udah terjadi kayak gitu. Tapi lebih sedih aja ketika <tuh> ya mereka punya anak punya generasi seterusnya tapi mereka mengambil kekayaan alam ya gitu aja tanpa memikirkan kita yang di bawahnya kayak gitu sih. All of us should take an action now. We don't have any time for it. for maybe tomorrow but we should act now. The one thread of hope is the generation of the millennials and the generation after that. Because we're needing something at scale. Look at the climate, needing a solution, nothing helps unless it's at scale. A generation of humans is at scale. Because they're all connected through social media, they're all using the same hashtags, they're having the same knowledge, it's the same conversation. So around the globe you have a people in a certain age who are determined to not let this go on in a bad way. to change, otherwise 
we will go down the history of the universe to being the most stupid generation of people. Nature shows us who's boss right now. 